having a look at all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Yes, so Super Krishna was the sum and substance of what you read. So the taste of holy name, uh, to get the taste of holy name, it takes time. So one has to find the faith and inclination and slowly only the taste will come to one who is practicing regularly. Very good. Initially, it, it may not find it very tasteful, but slowly like a jaundiced person, he will find the sugar candy very bitter. But slowly when the jaundice goes away, then only starts uh, tasting sweet for him. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So the first consideration is, the first thing is Adho Shraddha. At the beginning, at the very outset, what is needed is Shraddha, faith. Faith. And faith in, here, the faith in the holy name, faith that the holy name is Krishna. Krishna came as the holy name. That is the most important thing. Actually, I was remembering this morning, I was listening to a class by Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was telling that Krishna comes whenever there is some calamity and the calamities are caused due to two things. One is when the influence of the demons, when the demoniac influence becomes prevalent, then calamity prevails. And the other thing is sinful activities. Ultimately, it actually goes to the same thing. It is the demoniac influence. There are two influences. One is the divine influence and the other is the demonic influence. In this material nature, these two influences And divine influence means when we abide by Krishna's arrangement, that is the divine influence. Demigods are Krishna's appointed authorities. Krishna appointed. And when we, when that prevails, that's a divine influence. Krishna's arrangement is prevailing. But from time to time, the demons take over. They are envious. They're actually their cousins, their stepbrothers. Same father, but different mothers. As you know, the children of Aditi, Kashyap had many wives, and the children of one of his wives called Aditi is Adityas or demigods. And the children of other wife, another wife, is Diti, mind you, they are all sisters also. They're sisters. <laughs> but Aditi's children are Daitas or demons. The first two demons were Hiranakashipu and Hiranakashipu. And because of their nature, they got the lower part. Their residence is at the lower region of the universe. 
and the demigods have the higher region and the higher region is more opulent more prosperous people there are more happy of course they don't care about people's happiness but they simply saw the prosperity and their consideration was that we are from the same family we are the children of the same father then why this partiality but the thing is that krishna is not partial krishna is completely impartial vishnu is completely impartial but it is a nature we can go to their birth house aditi performed great austerities and as a result of that she got her children and diti uh, at a wrong time uh, she became sexually agitated and she practically forced her husband to have sex her husband warned us no this is not the right time it's an inauspicious time it don't be the outcome of this sexual intercourse is not going to be going to be beneficial to be extremely harmful but she wouldn't listen she compelled her husband to have sex with her and the result was to demoniac children hiranyakashipu and that's how the progeny or the line started demons so here we have to understand one thing that the in the material nature krishna is not involved at the most he simply glances towards the material so that's about his only arrangement and the rest is just happening by the by the arrangement that he set prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasa it was kind of an autopilot and the autopilot is functioning with two factors modes of material nature i mean the material nature has three modes and living entities has the has the independent independence to act the way they want every living entity is free to work free to function or act the way he wants every single individual has the free but the way one acts the there is reactions takes place and those reactions take place in the three modes of material nature and uddham gachanti shatastha madhye tishthati rajasa jagannath guna bhuktistha adho gachanti tamasa those who are acting in the mode of goodness uddham gachanti they go up madhye tishthati rajasa those who are in the mode of passion those who are acting in the mode of passion they remain in the middle region and those who are acting in the mode of ignorance which is a very disgusting mode jagannath guna prakritista due to their disgusting activities in the mode of ignorant adhogachanti they go down so uh, everyone is acting everyone has the freedom and he is acting according to his independent independent faculty or the freedom that they have and as a result of that they getting their reactions krishna is there but he is just a witness witness mean he is not acting he is not he is not getting in there he is just a witness he is just watching how you act and we can see that all three vishnu purusha avatars maha vishnu garvadakshay vishnu and shiradakshay vishnu they all are lying down garvadakshayi shayi means lying down lying in garbha ocean lying in causal ocean lying in milk ocean this is simply lying lying means inactive so the lord in this material nature is totally inactive and he has given us the freedom to function the way we want and 
and accordingly we are getting the results. So we cannot really blame anybody. If something inauspicious, something harmful is happening to us, we have to recognize that in the past we must have done something wrong. And as a result of that, the reaction is coming in this way. So <clears throat> the when we act in a sinful way, there is crisis, there is calamity, there is epidemic, pandemic, collective, collective karma. We are also getting the results of our karma in two ways. One is individual karma. I am getting the reactions of my own karma. And also there is collective karma. So these attacks like pandemic, uh, pandemic or epidemic, or these are, which are considered to be daivi. Daivi means arranged by demigod or happenings of material nature. Adhi Atmik, Adhi Daivik, Adhi Atmik, Adhi Bhautik, and Adhi Daivik. Adhi Atmik, things or distresses happening in the body, due to the body. Body and mind, we have two bodies, gross body, subtle body. So some calamities are caused by ourselves due to our bodies, gross body and subtle body. Some calamities are taking place, some distresses are caused, caused by others. Adi Bhautik. And some are due to natural calamities or arranged by the demigods, giving the us the collective. Actually, everything is being arranged by the demigods. Our individual karma also is being, being awarded to us or inflicted upon us by the demigods. Karma na daiva nitrena, daiva nitrena. The divine eyes are seeing us and accordingly they are giving us the results of the karma. So to go back to the point, like when there is some calamity, the crisis, mainly when it is caused by the, de de by the demons, then Krishna comes. Indrari vacuum Indrari Indra Ari Ar Indra is the king of the dem king of the demigods, head of the demigods. He is controlling the affairs of the universe. The demigods are different caretakers of different departments. Wind department, fire department, water department. Education department. And there are innumerable differences, um, departments in the universe, and different demigods are controlling, and head of all those demigods is Indra. So all the demigods are subservient to Indra, and Indra is the king of heaven. But Indra Ri, Indrasa Ari, Ari means an enemy. When the world is in distress, Due to the enemies of Indra, meaning the demons, then Krishna comes. So Prabhupada just mentioned, I mean, explained that point. That how the demons actually cause distress in this world. Then Krishna comes. And Juge Juge, every Juga Deva, Krishna comes to, to organize or to correct the anomalies, the difficulties in the material nature. And then Prabhupada pointed out that in this age now, yes, Krishna came as his holy name. 
So here we are. We have to have the faith that this holy name is Krishna. Just like whenever we are in distress, uh, we take shelter of Krishna, we have to take shelter of the holy name. And here we have one advantage. In other times when Krishna descends, Krishna comes, rectifies the situation, and goes back to the spiritual. Like we are discussing that in Uddhav Gita classes also. That how it is due to Brahma's request that Krishna came to this world. And in when the rectify the situation was corrected, all the demons have been annihilated, uh, that dharma has been established, Yudhishthi Maharaj has become the king. So in the sixth chapter of Buddha Gita, 11th chapter, 11th canto, there's a description. Brahma came with the demigods and told Krishna, now you can go. On our request you came, now you so this is how the incarnations in other ages, they come and after performing or correcting the situation, they go back. But in this age, appearing as the holy name, Krishna stayed. So that is a benefit we have, that's the advantage we have. Krishna is here. Krishna didn't go away, Krishna is here. And that's why I was pointing out that faith. With that faith, we have to take shelter of the Holy Name. With faith, we have to take shelter of the Holy Name. Krishna is here. He is there. He is here. Such a wonderful opportunity just to chant the Holy Name of the Lord. Hare Krishna. And Krishna is there. So, that is how merciful the Lord is. Recognizing the critical situation of the age of Kali, Krishna made this wonderful arrangement. He's present. And we have to chant the Holy Faith. This faith is the most important element, the most important factor. To the extent we have our faith, to that extent Krishna will manifest himself. So, and we are seeing, like, uh, I'm sure all of you must have noticed also that, you know, this pandemic, this COVID-19 is devastating the whole world. But how many devotees have been affected? We can count in fingers. How many devotees have been? And today only, I saw one report. Somebody actually sent me a YouTube, from the YouTube, I think. One doctor, from his observation and research, found out that this coronavirus 19 affects the individual, those who have animal fat in the body. That means those who are meat eaters, coronavirus is attacking them. Those who are vegetarians, they are not being affected. This is how we can actually see that yes, I mean his, his observation is correct. His observation is correct. Like this is the reason why devotees are not being affected. Because in their body there is no animal fat. Their, their body is made of plant fat, <laughs> plant fat. <laughs> so, I mean, and this is how we are seeing how this wonderful arrangement of Krishna is protecting his devotees. In one hand, the whole world is being ravaged by this pandemic, but the devotees are safe. 
Of course, we shouldn't become too complacent and think, oh, well, we are safe, so we don't care. No, take precaution. Take proper precaution. So, so it's happening all over the world. There are, there are lots of uh, difficulties. But at the same time, there's a lot of advantage as well. I mean, for, for a change, we got a time to just be in one place. I mean, at least I am, <laughs> I am seeing that. What a big difference it makes. Like, you know, after so many years, I'm at one place. And it makes a big difference. I can utilize my time in reading. Chanting, of course, is always there. Communicating with the devotees. And sometimes, I think I mentioned also to you all that I got a one write-up from one devotee, female, one Vaishnavi. She, assuming the role of a little child, she wrote that. She's seeing that. She's seeing all the advantages that happened. She's seeing that for the first time, he's having so much of so much association of his father and mother, because both the father and mother are working, so they barely she barely got. A chance to be with her father and mother. So now there she is. Her father is at home, mama is at home, and also, uh, like father and mother are together. I mean, previously barely saw that. And this way she just went on describing, and it's true. Like so many families, after such a long time, they just got an opportunity to be together. I'm sure you all also are experiencing that. So, take full advantage of this wonderful opportunity. And so, does anybody have any question? Or does, it, does anybody want to say anything? Yes, Damodar. Thank you, Lawrence. I'm going to ask another of those slightly controversial questions. Um, I don't mean any offence. Sometimes we hear these rumours or controversies and it's good to know what your guidance would be. So there's been a big uh, controversy for some years about the editing of Srila Prabhupada's books, that so many changes were made in the second edition or that the editing was continued after Srila Prabhupada's departure and he couldn't approve those those edits. Do you have any guidance for us around that, Guru Maharaj, how we should think about that, um, how we should there, respond, yeah. in fact, if people drag us there in? There are two ways to look at that, you know. Prabhupada did say that, you know, there shouldn't, they should not edit his books or correct his books, you know. Whatever is printed, is printed. And, but at the same time, I have one experience. You see, I was translating Bhagavad Gita and I pointed one mistake in Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada immediately called Tamal Krishna Maharaj and told him to report to BBG to correct that. Right? So then the other cons another consideration is, you see, Prabhupada dictated he, tra he translated and gave his purpose through dictaphone, dictated. They were transcribed. They were transcribed. First of all, you know, like, uh, I mean, when you're transcribing, you cannot get 100% accurate. 100% correct. And also, of course, they were edited, but those editing was done by individuals who are not very well conversant with the Vedic, you know, Vedic topic, Vedic subject. This topic, 
So there are mistakes, many, many mistakes. And, you know, and personally, I feel that I propose that also. But uh, anyway, I'll tell you what I thought should have been done or should be done is get a body of devotees, learned experts in various areas, let them sit together and go through the books and once and for all make all the corrections. Right? So that would have been the ideal thing to do and I, I think Prabhupada wouldn't mind doing that if it is done. But the problem is, you know, some individuals made the corrections and they corrected things that shouldn't have been corrected. They put in their own idea and that is why this controversy, you know, like, I mean, these corrections are unnecessary. Why correct that? That are perfectly all right. As if, you know, you know better than Shri So, so anyway, since you asked me, I mean, that is my, my take on this issue. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank Krishna. you so much. Next, next question from Shubha Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, uh, in chapter 17 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 16, um, Krishna explains that, you know, Manat Pasadam Tamyatu Manamatu Vinigraha and how should be inside. So all these qualities, the austerities of the mind, um, when should we think that we are developing that? Because we can't judge ourselves in terms of whether we are able to do all these austerities of the mind. And we are developing those uh, qualities of a devotee uh, over a period of time. Or is it required for us to uh, really judge that ourselves or we should not worry about it. Yeah, sure, sure we can change ourselves. You know, look at your pride. These are the uh, problems. Look at your pride. Look at your envy. Look at your anger. Uh, so when you detect that, you know, you correct them. So this is how you have the ability to correct. So wherever it's possible to correct, just correct. And, and then of course, you know, like you have, you know, your spiritual master. So there also, you know, there's a possibility of being corrected. So this is, these are the ways that you can work on yourself and at the same time, be open also, if others point out that Prabhu, I mean, what you said was not really right. And now instead of, you know, getting angry, oh, who are you to correct? Take it to the good spirit. So this is how the corrections can be done both from within and also from without. And these are, we have to recognize these enemies, you know, lust, greed, anger, illusion, envy. I mean, we all have that. We all have that. None of us are free from it. And that is why Mahaprabhu's suggestion. Be Trinadu Vishwanacha. Tarori Become humble. Become tolerant. And these are the two most important qualities that we need to transcend this material plan and come to this future. You know, what is, why this is so important? Because the cause of our material bondage is our false ego. It is due to a false ego that we are stuck here. False ego means identifying the body to be the self. That is the false people, false identity, mistaken identity. And along with that comes the false ego's prime influence is in pride and envy. 
We all are so proud here. I am the greatest. And it's natural because material nature is Krishna's inferior energy and we are from Krishna's superior energy. So we are superior to this material nature. But unfortunately, we are tiny uh, and the material nature is uh, limitless. So that is the problem. Like we are qualitatively, we are superior to the material nature, but because we are tiny, we are subjected to the material nature. So, and because we feel that we are better, we are greater, we have this problem falsely. We have the, we have pride. I am the best. I am the greatest. And yes, we have to work on ourselves. Hare Krishna. Next question. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Next we go to Praneshwar Prabhu. Yes, Praneshwar. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Dhanvat Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes. Guru Maharaj, my question is uh, regarding leadership. Um, Guru Maharaj, what is the interpretation of leadership as per you? And... Uh, the other question is, Guru Maharaj, does one need to be need? Uh, does one have to be a leader to go back to Godhead? <laughs> well, well, there are two types of leadership: material and spiritual. So, and both the leadership, both the structures are similar, like a pyramid. Material structure is like a pyramid tapering upwards. And right on top, there is one person sitting and controlling everything. That is, he is riding on everyone's back. Right? And then there is spiritual leadership. Spiritual leadership also, the structure, the spiritual structure is also like a pyramid, but in reverse way. The higher you go, you don't go higher, you lower you go, the more the shoulder, more the burden you have to shoulder. And ultimately there's one person who is shouldering everyone. Right, and that is Krishna. So you see the difference between material leadership and spiritual leadership. Yes, uh, spiritual domain also there is leadership. Like as I said, Krishna is the ultimate leader. And the more, to, like say, uh, you, what kind of leadership you take? You take spiritual leadership. And spiritual leadership means uh, you carry the burden of your disciples carry the burden of those who are dependent on you spiritually, right? And, and so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Only thing is that the leaders, we have to see the leader, the attitude of leadership is the attitude of leadership is to exploit or the attitude behind leadership is to guide and support and care. I don't know what kind of leadership I'm giving to all of you. <laughs> Sometimes when I was speaking, I was thinking that probably I am giving the kind of, I'm sort of exploiting a kind of leadership you know, where the pyramid is tapering upwards <laughs> and riding on your back. <laughs> Never much. Never much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We go next Hare to uh, Shyam Shundar Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandat Pranam. Hare um, Krishna Guru Maharaj, I've got uh, uh, two, three questions actually, and but they're very quick answers. I hope so. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, in our WhatsApp group, uh, which we have for the devotees, there is a uh, lot of discussion on Uddhav Gita, whereby there is an instance told about whether uh, when Uddhav asked 
uh, Krishna that why didn't he stop the gambling uh, uh, which was happening between Yudhishthira and Duryodhan. But when I read in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is not there. So is it the true uh, conversation that happened between Krishna and Uddhav about the uh, why Krishna didn't stop gambling or is it something speculation by devotees? Is there a separate Uddhav Gita? So that was my first question. Okay, let me let me first deal with this. You know, uh, when we are studying scriptures, you know, we can't use the logic, half chicken logic. You know that logic? That accept whatever I like and reject whatever I don't like. Right? The chicken lays eggs from behind and eats from the front. So get rid of the front part, you know, that eats and keep the hind part. No, we can't do that. When it is mentioned, we have to accept. It may not be mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam because Srimad Bhagavatam is in another level. Right? Srimad Bhagavatam is Satvata Samhita. Right? In transcendental mode. And that's why I mean, the details that are not really important has only been included in Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? But Mahabharata is a very, very like a, a detailed record of Krishna's pastimes along with the Pandavas, mainly with the Pandava in the center. And the thing is, what, what is the problem? Like we have to recognize that Krishna's pastimes are like a drama. Right? In a drama, when you see that the hero is getting beaten up, how do you feel? Don't you feel bad when you see that the heroine has been kidnapped and hero is being tortured? How do you feel? But if that was not there, then it would be drama. Right? Drama means conflict. That's the difference between a documentary and a drama. So, it's Krishna's pastimes like a drama. And in the drama, there is a, just as in a drama, there is a hero and there is a villain. Similarly, in Krishna's pastimes, always there is a himself and there is opposing force. And let's consider, had that gambling not have happened, would there be Mahabharata? I'm asking you. No, one has, actually, Guru my question was a bit different. Uh, like what? My question was, actually, the discussion that was happening is that uh, Uddhav did ask Krishna that why didn't you help, why didn't you stop the gambling and protect Yudhishthira? And then Krishna gives a deep answer that because he didn't remember me at that time. So I wanted to ask that whether it is stated in Uddhav Gita anywhere because Srimad Bhagavatam may be a very concise one. So no. I don't know the reference. Uh, no, in Uddhav Gita, I didn't find that. Okay, okay. So there's no reference. Uh, and Gurumaj, then there is another question. Okay, I uh, thought you were... Yes, Gurumaj. And Gurumaj, then there is another question yeah, is... Uh, uh, all the Shat Goswamis that we have, we call them Goswami. Uh, you explained me some time back that um, Goswamis are to be used those who are, who, like we say Swami, directly to the ones who never got married. But Goswamis are the ones who have conquered the senses. Uh, and that's why in ISKCON, uh, there are Goswamis and there's a Swami. So I wanted to understand from Shat Goswami perspective, why are they not called Swamis? Well, <laughs> uh, the thing is, they're, I mean, you know, like that understanding that uh, Goswami, uh, that's an ISKCON concept, actually. In okay. ISKCON, uh, I mean, that is a general standard. I, I don't know how far it is true. Uh, the householders, when they became sannasi, they became Goswami. And the brahmacharis, when they become sannyasis, they are swami. 
Maharaj, last but for that for that matter, Prabhupada himself is Swami, not a Goswami, although he was a householder. Right. <laughs> and Guruaj, one last question I have uh, is. Um, in terms of Prahlad Maharaj, I listened to one of your lectures, uh, previous lectures, where you had stated that Prahlad in previous birth uh, uh, was a, a Brahmin and he got attracted to a prostitute and they did a, uh, they did a, uh, on a Just letting you know, I'm so appreciating our connection once a week, and I would pray that we could keep that going, even when we stop the lockdown. It would be such a wonderful thing. I could. Uh, is Krishna our divine father? Is he our divine father? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And then the question then becomes is, and then who is our Divine Mother? Is that also Krishna? So in the material nature, yeah. you know, when you come to the material nature, then that concept of father and mother comes in. Okay. Right? Yes. Like for example, then, then the father is Lord Shiva. Oh, I see. And mother is material nature. Okay. Huh? Yeah. The mother material and Lord Shiva is the husband of material Mahamaya yeah. Durga. Durga Parvati. And he is the father because Lord Shiva is actually Krishna's Mahavishnu's glance towards the material nature. He just looks at the material nature yeah. and the material nature becomes agitated. Yeah. How? Because through his glance, all the living entities come to the material nature. Mm -hmm. And that glance is Shambhu or Lord Shiva. Right? So that means we all came through Lord Shiva to this material nature. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, uh, Lord Shiva is worshipped in the form of Lingam. Yeah. You know, have you seen the the stone that is representing Lord Shiva. Yes. Hmm. Yes. This Lord Shiva is represented because he's the father. Through him, okay. we have come to him. So then what you're saying, Maharaj, okay. that's very helpful. And then, so what you're saying then in the spiritual sky, there's no so-called mother and father relationship with Krishna because right. we are in the five exactly yes yeah. then it is just you know supreme personality of Godhead and his parts and parcels yes like the sun and the sun's rays there because you don't need a material body yes. there's no need for a mother okay right yes we came directly from Krishna yes. the spiritual body became manifest directly from Krishna. Like consider the how the, how the <clears throat> expansions are taking in the material, in the spiritual nature. Krishna expanded himself into Balaram. Yes. Balaram expanded. So these are a matter of expansions. And these expansions are of two kinds. He himself expands. Right? Krishna himself expands. Yes. That is called Swamsa or his incarnations. There's no difference between that expansion. And the other is Bibinamsa, the living entity. They're like the rays. Like if we consider Krishna expanded into Balaram, try to see it, one sun became two. Right? Yes. Then Balaram became Chaturbuha in Dwarka became four. 
right? Yes. In this way, the expansions are taking place. The same person, there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram. There's no difference between Vasudev and Sankarshan and Pradumna and Anurudh. There's no difference between Narayan, no difference between Vishnu. There is no difference uh, between Krishna and Krishna and Ramchandra. No difference between Krishna and Varahadi and so forth. Right? But Krishna considered Krishna like sun and even rays are coming out from the sun. And those rays are we are. Qualitatively one, but quantitatively one. Right. Yeah. And then so Radharani is also his expansion. Is that, is that right? Yes, Radharan is an expansion, a manif personification of his potency called pleasure potency. Oh, I see. So that's different to the expansions of Balaram. Balaram yes. is not the. Okay. Right. His, uh, Balaram is his own expansion, but is the expansion of Krishna's. So then, to clarify my understanding, so in the spiritual sky, we have relationships with Krishna as servitor in neutrality or uh, parental, conjugal, and friendship. So what you're saying is there's no room for us being the child in, in, in the spiritual Us being the? We, we are not no room the for? So Krishna is not the father in one sense. Oh yeah, okay, okay. The okay. Is not the but other way. there, there it is manifested a different way, yes. like uh, different individuals playing different roles. Yes. Right, like Nanda Jashoda, Devaki Vasudev. Right. Yes. They're playing the role of the parents. That's right. Yes. So thank like you. Like yesterday, much. the question came up that if uh, everyone expands in the spiritual world from Krishna, then how come Balaram became Krishna's elder brother? Yes. That means, so I, I yes. pointed out that there things are not calculated according to time or the movement of sun. In the material nature, things are uh, calculated by the movement of the sun in the form of time, past, present, future. The demigods worship is not recommended by Lord Krishna. Um, so how we can uh, understand this concept of Krishna in and he's saying we will see what we should be in the middle no just mode of repeat movement. your question i didn't hear it guru Maharaj, my question is in chapter 17 text 4 krishna is telling that man in the mode of goodness worship demigod and at other place lord krishna is telling that one should not worship demigod so don't we should be in the mode of goodness? Yes. In the mode of goodness, you worship demigod. But in the mode of pure goodness, you worship Krishna. Then there is no need to worship demigods. Beyond the goodness, material goodness, there is pure goodness. So Suddha Sattva, spiritual goodness. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Guru Mahaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Mahaj. Next, we have uh, Janak Raj Prabhu. Yes. Hi, right, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my obeisances. Guru Maharaj, thank you for making time for us. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, yes, I can hear you. I'm trying to see you. <laughs> uh, do you have your thing? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I am on. You, are, you have your... Uh, My camera, camera is on. on. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Camera yes. On. 
he's probably he's probably right away. <laughs> uh, anyway go ahead yeah now i can see it okay yeah now i can Except humble basins grow much. Um, yeah. In regards to a uh, class that was given this week by uh, a Bhagavatam class given this week by His Grace Rajavidya Prabhu. Um, so uh, he's quite, he was giving class about uh, you know adapting and and um, uh, for preaching purposes, um, you know we we can also you know extend Vedi uh, Bhakti. That means rules and regulations. And he was saying that, you know, like one of the uh, examples he gave was in, in this time and the time, very few people read books. But if they do read, they read in the, on the, in the toilet. So he says for preaching purposes, and this is not for devotee consumption, he says it's okay if they take proper books and read. But he, he mentioned like not Bhagavatam and stuff like that. And this, some of the devotees locally didn't like what he said. Um, so my question to Guru Maharaj would be, is an offense for preaching purposes, of course, not for Vaishnavas, uh, if we allow people to, you know, to read books even when they go to the toilets, Srila Prabhupada's books. Well, you know, like, you should have asked him the question. You should have asked him the question. He spoke. Then why didn't you ask him? Why are you asking uh, me? Right. Yes, Kumar. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we, we have been we've been ha having a lot of chat this week, and so I don't know I don't know in what context he right. said that, and I don't know who is who was reading Shrimad Bhagavatam in the mm -hmm. toilet. Like you know, um, I don't know, so it's very difficult for me. No, no, Guru Maharaj, he was mentioning that you know for for people for preaching purposes, he said like the example given was Shila Prabhupada said that if you do, if you can go out and preach, if there's nothing to eat, you can eat meat. So his question was. That you know, even if you get people in general want to read books, uh, even when they're in the toilet, it's better than not reading at all. Well, I would prefer not to answer this question. It's you know, it's unpleasant, you know, even to think yes, of it. You know, one should have proper faith, you know, what these books are. You know, let them have, you know, if one is reading like that, then he's not reading Bhagavatam in the right way. That will be my first answer. Well, Maj, it wasn't Bhagavatam and it wasn't for devotee consumption. You said people in general, just for preaching purposes, we, you know. That's why I said I don't know what, yes, in Maj. what context to say this. So it's difficult for me yes, to understand. Maj. Hare Krishna, Maj. Um, we have two more questions. Yeah. Uh, we go to um, uh, Raj Shekhar Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Raj Shekhar Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, my question was in regards to three modes. Uh, we also see in Bhagavatam 10 to 7, and uh, Narodhini is saying that there is also a time factor that uh, plays a role. Uh, so I just wanted to understand the relationship between the three modes of nature and uh, time factor, how they are related. Because it seems to me that uh, you can have. Uh, over the time, like, you know, uh, the mode of goodness will disappear and then passion will uh, prevail and then vice versa. So then, like, shouldn't one be worried about uh, these three modes in the same way as uh, happiness and distress comes over the time? Can you explain? I couldn't understand the question. What's your question? Uh, my question was, uh, was, I was trying to understand the difference between, or the relationship between the three modes and the time factor. Mm. Yeah. So, so what? Yeah, tell me. In this material world, how do they relate to each other? Like, uh, because, the, uh, because the fact is that uh, there are time factors uh, that, that is applicable when it comes to happiness and distress over the time, you know, like, Time is the greatest pillar as we have heard. So, the three modes as well, like uh, the time has it also fluctuates, and then one should not be worried technically that okay, I'm in the mode of ignorance of the time, I'll get into mode of goodness without trying. But how the time factor works? Well, the thing is not, is it, first of all, in the material nature, the preliminary factor is actually time. Like everything is happening in the material nature on the basis of time. 
right? Time is, you know, Krishna. And again, we go back. Time is also Lord Shiva. Mahakal, right? And then we can see that this time is actually Krishna's glance. Krishna's glance is manifesting in the form of time. And the material nature has been endowed with three modes. Now, how we'll be affected by the modes is depending upon our mentality, our attitude. In which mode we are going to act. It's, we have to decide, right? Whether we are going to act in the mode of goodness or passion and ignorance. It's not that uh, from ignorance we'll transcend to passion, then passion to goodness. It's not exactly like that. Like for example, <clears throat> when you take to Krishna consciousness seriously, you're already situated in the mode of pure goodness, or at least in the mode of goodness. And then in course of time, when you become completely pure, you'll transcend the material nature altogether. Pure goodness. It's not, the influence of modes is not dependent upon time in that way. Whereas, Everything in this world is dependent upon time. Thank you, Gomaj. That makes sense. Okay. Hi, Krishna Gomaj. Uh, last question from uh, Pranaveshwar Krishna Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, a very short question. Uh, hmm. Guru Maharaj, uh, a small sect of Shaivites believe that uh, Lord Shiva came in the form of Sarabha to pacify the anger of uh, Narsingha Dev. Guru Maharaj, I wanted to understand from a Gaudiya Vaishnavism perspective, do we have a view on that? You see, there are different Puranas. Uh, some Puranas are meant for the more the people in the mode of ignorance, some in the mode of passion, for some in the mode of passion, and some Puranas for those who are in the mode of goodness. And the Vaishnava activities are in the mode of pure goodness. Right? Say, for example, some patients went to a doctor and the doctor said that uh, take this medicine. And then, you know, like depending upon the the the, in, the, the intensity of the disease, the doctor will prescribe different medicines, right? It's not that all are, you know, going to have the same medicine. And so similarly, you know, for different individuals, depending on the degree of their disease, in the mode of ignorance, the disease is extremely intense. In passion, it's better than, <laughs> better than <laughs> ignorance, but it's also very intense disease. But in the mode of goodness, the disease is not so bad. So you see, but still he needs a prescription, he needs medicine, right? But then when he goes into the pure goodness, the Vaishnava is situated in that. There, they don't need any medicine, right? Because there, they have nectar, so there's no need for medicine. <laughs> so, you know, like in some Tamashik Puran, there's some description, you know, to increase their faith. You see, for them to develop their faith in Krishna is very difficult. Because the way one has to act to be a devotee is, you know, unless and until you come to a certain state, you cannot. Therefore, you know, for the, those who are in the mode of ignorance, they are, you know, given uh, kind of the Puranas are helping them to develop their faith in the Shiva or Devi. In the mode of passion, uh, those instructions are in developing faith in Ganesh and Surya. 
and those who are in the mode of goodness, they are, were, they are kind of given, they worship the Lord as Vishnu. But this Vishnu also is not, this Vishnu is also is one of the demigods. Although Krishna is expansion, Krishna, but he is one of the demigods. But then when he transcend the material platform, material goodness, come to Sutta Shabda, then or Ramchandra. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, very much. Thanks. Yes. Hari <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank Go, you. Go, Hari. 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 Hari.